All right, let's have a quick look at this TV in here, why it's not working. I really wanted to replace this with a flat screen so the owner would have HDMI inputs. Um, but that looks like it's going to be a lot of work because there really is no flat screen that easily fits in here without a whole bunch of modification. So, first thing I'm going to do is just power this up because I've seen a lot of times before where another person's diagnosis is completely way off. So, we'll power it up and just get a baseline on it. I'm looking at what's holding this chassis in here. It's, it's kind of like... This thing has a bunch of hours on it. You can tell by the fuzz on everything. And this thing is just furry. Power has been applied. I heard the relay and the degaussing engage. I hear something. Oh, it's hiss from the speakers. From the audio amp. I thought that usually when the horizontal or the flyback is bad, the horizontal output shorts. And that takes out the complete power supply. I don't know how this is fully powered, but... I want to pull the chassis out of here and I got to deal with the lovely hot glue special. Okay, I get it now. It's a cheater plug and somebody soldered the uh, went in there and soldered a lead in parallel with the line for the uh, tuner and then they didn't have a a female plug so they just soldered this onto there and then coated it with hot glue that's brilliant UL listed for days alright so the yoke half of it plugs in there and half of it plugs in over here then I got two two ground wires going to the CRT. One of them plugs in here, and one of them plugs in back here by this electrolytic. Now let's see, what is this for? What is the point of this thing? Just like something stuck through the front. Okay, we got the we got the remote sensor, we got a wire here, and we got a ground wire to the remote sensor with a clip on top of it. The degaussing coil plugs in right here. next to this choke all right okay this red and black is going to the right speaker and this black and brown is going to the left speaker looking at it from the front I still got this mystery thing in the front here and that mystery thing plugs into this down here I'm 
trying to kind of oh, cut it out. Okay. And here's the chassis. And then I had to unplug this from here. Now this is brilliant because this will plug on both ways and I don't know if I got it back on the right. I'm just documenting, that's all, just documenting. So here's the flyback. And we can tell this has a lot of hours on it. Twenty five C five thirty nine. Looks like it's got the original transistors in it. These little Inductors around the little ferrite rod are kind of interesting. Look at how many of them there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think I've ever seen that many of those in a TV. Checking the emitter to collector junction on the horizontal output transistor, it's not, it's not shorted. Uh, of course you can't check the base to emitter junction because well let's go to ohms is measuring 2.2.6 ohms but that's the horizontal drive transformer um, but at least it's not shorted emitter to collector and I pretty sure that's the way these things when they go I mean unless it just totally shorted and then got blown open but the fuse to the set is not blown and transistor is not shorted yeah so see you measuring this 0 0.05 ohms here and this 68 and whatever these inductors are. So the next step is going to be to hook the horizontal uh, tester up to it. And we'll pin five is the B plus, and then we're going to use collector. All you really need is pin five and collector, but I think if you hook emitter up to it, it actually tests the transistor. The transistor needs to be pulled out of the circuit. To be tested I know that so of course they got this stupid plastic thing right over the bottom of the most highest failure rate part in the TV and they got this one over the second most highest which is the regulator so good engineering so I'm gonna I'm gonna assume this is pin five five that's six um, It's hard to tell because this is 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm going to try assume that's 5. I guess I could check it with the ohm meter. Alright, this is fairly straightforward. You have collector B+, plus, which is the red here, which is hooked to 5. And then you have emitter and uh, collector. So let's see what happens here. 
select test horizontal output uh, 16 kilohertz hey look at that nothing wrong with that flyback six milliamps and what this thing is doing is it's actually running the flyback as the TV does. I think it runs it at about 24 volts. So it should be producing a little high voltage. Let's see, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's do, uh, how do you get out of this? Um, let's do a flyback test. Let's do same thing. Let's do, um, let's see, let's do a ring test. Let's ring the flyback. Nine rings, bad. Oh, 17 rings, good. 70 ring? Yeah. It's kind of all over the place. All right, here's the next step. Let's see, turn it on. Horizontal output. TV. Six milliamps. Okay, let's see if there's actually some high voltage here. Yes, sir. There's about there's about a kilovolt there. Should I touch it? Should I stick my tongue on it? Okay, let's short it to ground. We got six milliamps. I'm gonna. Oh, look at that get these reflections so that's open now I'm going to short the high voltage cap to I'm going to short it to ground the AC short Hear it arcing? I would say this flyback is good. And there's no drive getting to the output transistor for whatever reason. Uh, let me check the well, we know at least the secondary, the drive transformer is good because it measured shorted. But let me, I could check the primary solder joints of the drive transformer and maybe the drive transistor. Okay, here's the drive transistor right here. And then here's the, here's the uh, collector that comes up to the, drive transformer and this is a secondary secondary measures 128 ohms huh 128 ohms the uh, schematic says 1.8 ohms Interesting, they call the driver a switch mode regulator. Huh. There's, there's the 180 ohms I'm measuring right there, I bet you. I bet this is the 180 ohms I'm measuring because it comes, it's probably a loop here. Because see, both sides of this are 128 volts. I bet you this sucker is open. 
this thing is wide open and I'm measuring the drop through this resistor because this is just a big loop through this inductor down around through this resistor and back down around to B plus on both sides from here to here okay I guess I could yank that thing real quick I thought maybe I might have ruined it with air that's generally why you don't see me blowing stuff off but I don't think so. That's awfully heavy wire there. Well, it reads 130 ohms out of the circuit. So I, I don't know, is the schematic wrong or is there something wrong with this transformer? I, I'm going to need to do a little bit more research on this. I don't know. Okay, well I'm being a complete dunce with this. I need to sit down and look at the schematic. This is actually a pre-driver transformer and it's good. This big thing right here, this is the drive transformer, the horizontal drive transformer. And this is the drive transistor and this is the output transistor. So this is, I guess because this is 80s it's a little more old school things are a little bigger. So I think the next step with this is to get the chassis back in the set and uh, get it powered up and start with some DC voltages and then move on to the scope and see if we're even getting uh, output from the horizontal oscillator. Maybe one of the power supply, supply voltages is missing. Yeah, let's let's go back to the basics, knowing that the flyback and the horizontal output's good, and we'll go with the basics. So I guess the lesson here is um, never trust anyone else's diagnosis, because, like I said in the previous video, the owner had this diagnosed by a TV repair shop, and they said that the flyback was bad and the horizontal output and the regulator and the CRT. Well, CRT is probably aged, but it's not, you know, I don't have a test socket for it, so I don't know, but I would assume that it's probably a little weak, but it, the guy said it was working okay, and it just stopped one day, so that's not the CRT, most likely, unless it's shorted inside. So never trust anyone else's diagnosis and keep pattern failures in mind but don't use pattern failures as rule because uh, the information was is that the flyback was a high failure rate part in here and most likely that would be bad which is probably what that TV shop was going off of uh, you know I guess trust but verify or don't trust and verify or ignore and verify I don't know maybe maybe ignore and verify so here's the one I, I, I thought I was checking that that big one which is supposed to be 1.8 and 0 and then here's the one I was testing right here which is 137 and 1.7 You've got the horizontal driver here. Maybe I should check that. Or maybe I should just replace that. A hundred microfarad. Uh, let's see. There's a couple other caps, a couple other line B plus filters here. I doubt those are what are causing. Well, unless this transistor here was open, but again, we got to wow! Look at that, 446 volts. That's one big ass pulse, and then it's 12 volts over here. So start start here and work our way back. Uh, hey, maybe there's not even B plus getting to this thing. Who knows? Pulse 
pulse width regulator. It's a 330 here. And then here's that air latch. It's part of the x-ray detection. So we have a sync processor chip. And the horizontal comes off the sync processor chip into a coupler driver and then into an opto isolator. And out of the optical isolator. That's kind of a cool idea because then if something shorts it won't back up behind that and destroy the IC. And then we got a pulse shaper and then it goes on to the driver. So we'll put it back in and start with the basics and this will be part one of the um, Magnavox combo, Franken combo um, this thing uh, diagnosis and repair